Have you ever used a weird figure of speech and thought, I wonder where that came from? Well, I hate to burst your bubble, but some of those phrases have very racist beginnings. Here are six phrases you never knew were racist. Okay, okay, everybody settle down. That's enough from the peanut gallery. Whether it's joking around too much in class or making comments that interrupt a presentation, the peanut gallery describes heckling or some sort of unwanted disruption. In the 1920s, the peanut gallery was the theater balcony where black folks were forced to sit due to segregation. In some places, it was even called the N-word gallery. Well, tell us how you really feel. So why peanuts? Well, today we celebrate George Washington Carver as the pioneer of the peanut, but back then, being a black scientist was taken as a joke. Peanuts were also a popular, cheap theater snack, so associating black people with peanuts was meant as an insult. Ooh, five o'clock? Sorry, no can do. If something's not gonna work out, no can do is one of the simplest ways to get the message across. But this phrase started in the early 20th century as a bad Chinese impression. It's not uncommon for immigrants to speak what's known as pidgin languages, which are simplified versions of a language in order to help people communicate. Instead of respecting how difficult it is to pick up another language, Westerners mimicked Chinese pidgin English, and now centuries later, no can do has stuck. Well, hey there, stranger, long time. No see! When you run into an old friend, long time no see is shorthand for, it's taken way too long, but I am so happy to see you. Similar to no can do, long time no see is also a mimicry of pidgin English, but this time, it's the indigenous people who are the butt of this nasty joke. Ugh, I told Cheryl not to tell Jason that I couldn't make his party, and she totally sold me down the river. When you've been sold down the river, it essentially means that you've been betrayed. And as it turns out, this phrase's origin is pretty literal. So during slavery, slave owners would punish disruptive slaves by selling them to plantations in the Deep South, where conditions were much harder. And how do you think they got there? Why, the Mississippi River, of course. Oh, you're gonna ruin another phrase for me? Hip hip hooray. Hip hip hooray is the Americanized version of hep hep hurrah, which is meant to be a celebratory exclamation. But the original was used as a Nazi rallying cry when raiding Jewish ghettos during the Holocaust. There are a few different theories as to where hep came from before that, but it's said to be the Latin acronym for Jerusalem is lost. Pre-Holocaust, the hep hep riots of 1819 left countless German Jewish businesses destroyed. Ugh, I tried to buy an extra ticket for the concert out front and the guy totally me. Now this is a phrase you've probably heard a million times before, so why are we censoring it? Well, the G word is actually a racial slur. Hold up. Beeped is a racial slur? Hold, hold up, who is beeping me? Yeah. So the G word means to cheat or take advantage of someone, but it started out as a nasty nickname for the Romani people. The Romani are a nomadic Eastern European group that originated from India, but these days they live all around the world. Throughout history, the Romani have been stereotyped as untrustworthy, which has been used to justify their mistreatment. When they first came to Europe, Europeans incorrectly assumed they were from Egypt, and thus the G word was born. Oh, so now I have to give up my sexy Halloween costume? Ugh, okay, enough with the beeps. Oh, you mean that low rent pirate costume? Romani people don't even dress like that. Here's the thing, the G word does not mean someone who's free spirited or likes to travel a lot. Similar to the N word, the G word is a racial slur that's been historically used to uphold the oppression of an entire group of people. In this case, the Romani. Unlike the other phrases on this list, the consequences of the G word are still felt today. Romani continue to face discrimination worldwide. In 2009, France deported over 10,000 Romani people. And these days, many are no longer nomadic because of laws that target them. The last Romani regulation law to be repealed in the US was in 1998. And across Europe, they're often denied housing, jobs are forced into substandard segregated schools and are too often victims of hate crimes. And that's not even touching on the movies and reality shows that use this nasty slur to misrepresent the Romani. Ugh. So now I have to give up every phrase that has a terrible history? Not exactly. The G word still hurts the Romani people today, so I'd hope we can agree to live without it. But nowadays, the other phrases are pretty harmless. Look, I'm not here to tell you how to talk. But understanding where these words and phrases come from is an important part of understanding how racism and oppression have shaped the world we live in today. So do you know of any common words or phrases that have not so happy origin stories? Share a few in the comments and we will see you next week right here on Decoded. Last week we did a sketch about Donald Trump. 
Here's what you had to say. Yeah, Hair of Glee, he was so good and super punchable. You call it Miss Animaniac, contour on fleek. You might wanna check the video description box, Bio2020, cause we linked where all of those quotes came from and they didn't come from the book, so accuracy on point. Chloe, we really tried to capture the bad Trump hair, but they just don't make wigs like that.